good morning you guys good to see everybody today it's gonna be a good friday today it's absolutely beautiful i feel better i was sick for a couple of days there and it's got to be a good friday because it's literally good friday today i was trying to make it up here in time to see aaron he was uh replacing the screens on our kpi little wash plant here but it looks like we're late because keith's already up there in the big john deere 844k feeding the plant running some uh some sand through the new screens but i want to walk up there and let's check them out Like you must have replaced the bottom screen deck because I still see a hole or two on the top screen deck and it doesn't really matter in this case because we're not trying to segregate the two materials we're just trying to scalp any large stuff from uh, keeping it from the sand actually going down into the tank down there so as long as that bottom screen is intact which is a 3 8 inch screen as long as it's intact that's all we care about so nothing larger than a 3 8 goes into our final product if we were trying to separate you know rock then it would be important but in this case as long as that bottom screen is okay we're in good shape shaky up here so i'm gonna go down there and talk to you guys uh... it looks like we got a little bit more organic material than our sand than normal probably because they're stripping some new land but you see this organic stuff the black like the bark pieces of roots and stuff like that you don't want that in your concrete sand well one because it's not sand and two because it can actually uh, affect the rebar in the concrete it can be what's considered a deleterious substance and actually help break down the rebar so we're floating all that stuff out okay it's a lot less shaky up here on this wooden deck than up there you can see that shaker deck that whole platform just shakes as it's supposed to but here i can show you guys why it doesn't matter on that top screen and the reason is because everything's going into the same pit because we're discarding all of this material anyhow now hopefully down the road we'll be able to come back with a log washer and wash the clay uh, and try to separate it from the rock because believe it or not there's actually some really pretty river rock down in the, this material but uh since you know since it's going to the same spot it really doesn't matter about that top deck if we were again if we were trying to segregate rock out then we'd have each of these chutes going into a separate a separate bin we take all you can't hardly see it for the trees now but there's a big pile of discarded rock and clay balls over there 
we're just stockpiling it until hopefully one day we have enough and then we have the equipment to separate the rock out. Let's go over here. I see on the horizon somebody's up in the Volvo excavator. Looks like they're screening some topsoil. Let's ride around there and check them out. Sand's looking pretty though, ain't it y'all? I love this lighter, lighter color. But this is our, our C33 concrete sand right here. It's nice and coarse. You hear that crunch? That's what you want right there. Good conglomeration of uh, coarse sand mixed with fine. This will be uh, what's considered C33 concrete sand. gonna be a busy day today man phone won't quit ringing they say grassroots to garden center is like off the chain right now we do got something cool coming in in about an hour or two we went ahead and ordered a new service truck for Rolando a real nice one brand new he's excited we're all excited to see it so it should be here in a little bit of course I'll film that for you guys and then I gotta head down to the garden center and help those folks out but it's just uh <laughs> it's wide open as I always say but especially today looks like we got A.A. Ron up in the Volvo feeding the Dobstat Trommel making some absolutely beautiful topsoil we have been pumping through the topsoil and the compost as a matter of fact I'm a little scared that we may run out of compost so this is really only our probably second season of actively promoting the compost sales last year we moved some but then it really caught on and this year has been flying out the gate which is great but i'm kind of worried we may we may run out that would not be a good situation it's a good problem but nonetheless still a problem but the topsoil and compost have been hot this spring but man look how beautiful dark rich topsoil that is that is just absolutely beautiful topsoil is uh, a mix of material that comes in through the uh, the green waste you know with all the trees a lot of times people bring dirt and then this will be na native topsoil too that we've stripped off of land uh, for activities like the mulching or landfill or what have you then we'll blend in coffee with this as well so it's kind of a conglomeration but Aaron will take it scoop it put it in this Dobstat trommel it'll screen out any large particles and then of course that'll hit the Barford, um, I think this is a 60, yeah, it's a 65 foot stacker. It'll hit the stacker and he can make himself a nice big pile. And then we can pull it to, and kind of, it's a radial stacker, although it's manual, you have to pull it. We can make a nice wall of topsoil here and get ourselves a good stockpile for sale.
as you see here just help keep the the holes in the trommel screen from getting clogged up because topsoil you know stays pretty moist if you didn't have those brushes cleaning the screens it would just blind over and then you, you wouldn't get any final product everything would come off the discharge end here's the stuff we're trying to get out just any clay balls sticks rocks any kind of large stuff there's what's happening inside the trommel we don't want obviously in our final product it just piles up right here and a lot of times too you can take this and run it right back through because there's still a lot of topsoil that just accidentally comes through you know and gets discarded or what we'll do is take these piles go let them sit for a year or so a lot of these sticks and dirt clods and stuff will break down and we'll rescreen it so it'll get used again but we and and to another um purpose for it we can use it on the landfill and side slopes if we need to it grows great grass looking good a hey, hey, ron build us a mountain of topsoil around here we're going to need it this season it looks like and dadgummit y'all there's just not enough hours in the day i've got to get up here and get this rock cleaned up and palletized and get it down to the garden center because we ain't going to sell it right here but i i just to be honest with you i have no idea when i'm going to get to it right now it's just uh it's so busy i feel like i'm just in a whirlwind every day and i'm just getting blown all over the place and the phone won't quit ringing <laughs> Again, all good problems because we are that busy, but as you get, get so frustrated because I can't get everything done that I want to. Let's ride up to the landfill uh, while we're waiting on our truck to come in, see what they got going on up there. It's a beautiful day today, Marco. my high vis vest on so I don't get a bunch of comments and I'm not wearing my hard hat one because I don't have to and two because I don't want to has it been busy today Marco yeah, oh that's right the county's closed today isn't it it's yep. good good Friday Yeah, I forgot that all the government organizations are going to be closed down today due to it being Good Friday, but we needed some rock down at Grassroots, but the quarry was closed, so we didn't get get our rock. And then, as you heard, Marco just said that the, uh, the Aiken County C&D landfill, of course, is closed too, so they've been real busy, but they've got kind of like a, a little lull right now. There's not a truck on the on the tip floor which is rare but it goes it goes in spurts you know as the trucks go out delivering containers we'll just have a a few little much needed breaks throughout the day but this tipping floor is getting real tight down here as i showed you guys in the last video or video before i can't remember you know we're we're working this material on out we've already got the road built up top we'll get it to where um you know it's as tight as we can stand it before we'll then take traffic up to the top and start dumping down to fill in that area and they got the dozer fixed the other day so we'll talk to antonio here in a second make sure that everything's still working as it should and not having that transmission overheating issue that we were having we got david in the hyundai 160 with the magnet i just saw him he was packing this container a while ago so it looks like it's completely full so it's ready to go out got mike 
And the 826C compactor up there rolling in the trash. Looking really, really good down here. That's what you want to see right there. Not a lot of stuff sticking up. Everything nice and walked in and rolled in. The guys are killing it per usual up here. So David will take that magnet when he has time and he'll just come in over the floor picking up bits of metal and it's amazing what that thing picks up. I'm going to go over here and show you guys. Jump, jumping up off the floor to that magnet. It's incredible the amount of metal that comes into this place. Wire bucket handles. Looks like some kind of tin can lids, five gallon bucket lids. And that little pickup truck just brought in some kind of wire rack and an old window here Kind of like, uh, almost like a metal detector on the beach, kind of. He just combs that thing over, and the stuff just jumps right up to it. It's so fun to watch. It's a fun machine to run, too. like a scav scavenger hunt and of course you know plastic and stuff like that too will get stuck to it he'll take it over there drop it pick through it we won't, don't want to put any plastic in the container because then they'll they'll dock us when we do take it to sell it but man you know we're just getting a minuscule amount of metal there's so much that it gets buried matter of fact some of you guys were making the comment that you know and it's already happening in other parts of the world and the country where they're going back and remining landfills digging them up just to go back in and get all the stuff that um, you know people didn't recycle and for, for whatever reason now i've already told you guys the reason here is it's cheaper to landfill than it is to recycle so yeah especially when we first started 20 something years ago we buried everything so i tell my son i was like hey one day you're gonna be digging this whole place back up, going through the stuff that I buried and calling me a fool for burying it. And uh, they'll be mining that stuff out and selling it as a commodity. Or at least I, I hope that happens. Um, I wish we could go ahead and recycle it out now. Well, just simply the economics just don't work out. It's not, it's not profitable enough. Here's a new something. Let's see what this is.
I don't know what that thing is. Some kind of says body body wedge. Huh. Who knows? Somebody's teddy bear they got tired of. Here comes one of our upstream trucks. So this is our roll-off company here, as I mentioned in the past. And one day here soon, I'm gonna jump in one of the roll-off trucks and go for a ride and go pick up a couple containers. A lot of you guys have wanted to see some more of the trucking side of things, so that'll be fun. I just gotta find time to do it. Here's another one of the nightmare materials that come in that we all hate. This is ductwork. So you see that wire? It's wrapped up in there. That stuff will get wrapped up on the compactor wheels or the dozer tracks, excavator tracks, and it is a nightmare to try to cut out. And I'll go ahead and touch base on this before you guys start commenting. But you see, we got a bunch of crows that have showed up, and there's nothing really for them to eat here. However, there is always the mcdonald's bag or something that a driver will throw out of the truck we're not we're not legally allowed to bury any organic waste we're strictly construction and demolition but inevitably a driver is going to throw some french fries or something out or a bag of trash is going to get missed and that's what the the crows are looking for a lot of times you know birds are a huge problem at municipal landfills seagulls scavengers they, they really create have it um and you'll see that a lot at landfills there's actually one guy who makes a living going around with fireworks i think he's got like a, a hawk that he takes around that his hawk chases the birds away because they interrupt activity but thank goodness we don't have that that issue here you hardly ever see many birds as a matter of fact i'm surprised to see that many crows maybe it's spring they're migrating or something Here come some trucks now, folks. And we got a double roll off coming in right now. Let's see how this works out. You gotta be a dang, dang good driver, but they say he can do it. So we, we shall see. I've actually never seen the double, double roll off offload before. So let's check this out. Voy a grabar eso. Bueno, a verte. Sí. Well, he's done better than I could so far, I tell you that much. This is a tight, tight little spot. Get this big old chunk of metal out of the out of the way. Yeah, so these guys are out of Lexington, South Carolina. So they pull pull double containers to make it worth worth their while coming down here. About a 45 minute trip. And then it looks like we got Jesus in the t-rex today hauling some cover material up to the top getting it prepped Marco, he does a fantastic job up here, man. He's been with me for a long time. That fella, he just stays hopping all over this whole this whole site up here. But he'll, when he has time, you know, he'll open tailgates for the drivers like he did there. Just make it easier for him and gives him a, a first view inside the container to make sure that it's acceptable material.
So he's got some separate controls on this one right here. And then I guess, you know, if I had to imagine, then I guess he jackknifes it to dump that second one or either has to drop the trailer. We'll find out here in a second. Like I say, I've never seen this one be actually dumped up here in the landfill. Buddy, you did a good job getting that thing turned around up here. I'd have had it jackknife and stuck. Got us a roll of sod if we wanted some extra work. Then some pallets, just some old buckets. Same old stuff we see all day long. Folks just throwing away money. Take that to your yard, Marco. Yeah. Plant it, plant it in your front yard. Yeah, that's still alive too. Darn, I hate to see that go to waste, but we ain't got time for that today. Sure is tempting though. I don't know how much a roll of side is now, but I know that ain't cheap. Okay, yeah, it looks like he is just going to jackknife it and dump it. You got to be a pretty dang good driver to run this rig right here. There goes another load of cover. Anderson's in the Volvo. That's pretty slick right there. Only negative I see is, you know, when you dump this load out of the one that is about to dump now and pulls forward seems like that tag trailer might want to get up in the trash a little bit but we're gonna find out right now not gonna make it Marco <laughs> close <laughs> close <laughs> hey David's gonna get it for you this is why this this Hyundai comes in so handy all right I will make sure oh he didn't see us oh well anyway the excavator comes in real handy for just uh, little things like this but especially when loads get hung up in a truck David can take that thumb get up in there and get it so he's gonna have to get a little bit of the trash out of the way now so we can open that tailgate up all the way but little stuff like this that with the guys do here in the landfill that i don't think many other landfills offer the kind of service that we do these guys are just you know more than willing to help out and that's what makes a big difference and and how many folks want to come here and dump because we do offer this service because you can imagine like showing up in a landfill that doesn't have anybody helping and trying to do all this stuff yourself, you know, it can be a lot more frustrating.
Now he's gonna back up a little bit just to get the remainder off of his dumpster and he's all clean, okay. So as long as he stays turning that way as he dumps out, the tag, tag trailer actually, I think is gonna clear the trash. That's pretty slick, man. Marco will try to get a little bit out he can so it don't blow out going down the road. This is the, the other reason why it's important to have, you know, a big open working floor for situations like this because more trucks are going to come in now. And you can get backed up real quick, like if it's super, super busy and you've got stuff like this happening on the working floor and trash everywhere, it can turn into a cluster real quick, like. So I'm sure that Antonio, hey buddy, Antonio is uh, anxious. To get this material pushed because i just saw some other trucks pulling up onto the tipping floor right now so as soon as this truck gets on out of the way they'll get this material pushed and the cycle will continue over and over and over again all day every day looks like his brakes might be locked up unless he's just holding them on purpose he might have to build up some air pressure here Got him, got his air, his brakes aired back up, and he's out of here. So either David wants to plant some grass in his yard this weekend, or he might take it over to the slope, or I'm just getting it out of the trash for some reason. Not exactly sure why. thing though he's gonna want them big pieces of tin so there's a couple nice pieces of tin there and he'll crunch them up to try to get all that insulation off make it a cleaner metal just like that This looks like a bunch of uh, insulation residue. There's a local company that manufactures insulation. So this will be all the waste material from that process. Some of the um, insulation that goes around like ovens or industrial boilers, that type stuff.
And so uh, Antonio will take his D6, take that material up on the hill like usual, and Mike will take and compact it and roll it in. David will stay on the magnet, getting the metal out, and uh, then they'll get this load pushed and get ready for the for the next wave to come in. Golly, it's pretty today, y'all. We ought to be fishing instead of working. It is just absolutely perfect. Not a cloud in the sky. It's probably about 75 right now. I'm scared to even go down to the garden center later from when I talked to him on the phone earlier. It was just, uh, it was brief, but I could hear in the background how busy it was. But we're gonna go back down the hill now and wait on the arrival of our new service truck. Well, y'all, we have got one happy mechanic right here so the truck just showed up the uh the salesman and the tech just kind of went over the whole truck with rolando rolando you ought to just take take the crane and pick your old truck up and throw it <laughs> throw it in the trash it. yeah <laughs> this thing is sweet dude wow you ain't gonna know how to act with this thing man this thing has got all the bells and whistles but the main thing that you know main reason we bought it is because it had this crane system so this is a stellar crane system and in the past you know anytime we need to do any cylinder work we always have to take an excavator or lo loader whatever piece of additional equipment to pick up some of the heavier stuff around here so this crane is going to be a real game changer for mechanicing around here in the landfill got a nice workbench on the back some heavy duty steps let's see <clears throat> i believe that's going to be our hydraulic reservoir up yonder not exactly sure let's cop up in there and see what that thing is in front of it nice heavy duty tailgate tie downs man this bed is huge got an air compressor golly okay so this is just a divider plate keep anything from hitting the actual hydraulic reservoir golly i am excited this is one sweet rig right here you guys man this thing is nice dude it's so clean yeah, it's not as <laughs> brand, new. brand spanking new and we got work lights all around the whole cab. Let's see what's in this one. I forget already. Okay, just some storage shelves. There's your air compressor. You gotta shut shut this one off. Got a lot of air coming out here yeah, somewhere. I'm, I'm not much. sure. There you go. And let's see here in the center one, got these nice bins that slide out for putting nut, nuts and bolts or whatever he wants to put in them. The, the, door are, the drawers I really like are in here. Now this is pretty nifty. So this has got your locking tool racks that slide out tool drawers. Larger ones down here. That is nice. Golly. And the cool thing the, the fellow was showing me a while ago is not only can you lock each independent compartment, but then you got a master lock right here. So you can slide that bolt in, put a padlock, and even if you use the key or if somebody were to try to pry it, these things aren't coming open. So that's a nice feature. All kinds of storage all over the place on this truck. We can put you some pry bars actually in the bumper or workbench and this one also is four-wheel drive because well we just got to have that with the with the terrain around here back seat station I assume that's probably touchscreen I'm not gonna hit anything now with him back there working on it 
and you hit your PTO button right here this activates the crane and air compressor and everything in the back all your light switches and then that's the remote that we are not going to lose because the guy said that it is crazy expensive like close to 20 grand expensive now it does have an alarm that if you drive off and you leave your remote behind it'll let you know but yeah so don't lose the remote Rolando I have to kill you <laughs> yeah, make you make you a necklace <laughs> And of course your four-wheel drive nice little center center console cabin but man what a fine vehicle Rondo's trying to figure out his, his crane. Looks like he got her figured out now. That is going to be a just a world of difference and a lot of help to him. You know, doing cylinders or anything that we've got to pick up that's heavy. That's going to be an absolute game changer. And let's see, on this side, I believe this is storage for, yeah, for your acetylene oxygen tanks. we got to put a welder on here but i'll show y'all something on the other side in a minute that's pretty pretty nice some more storage let's see what we got here we got some more drawers i don't think these pull out no they don't these are just some storage shelves you want you want to ride we can pick you up yeah let's pick something up right here yeah hook at those belt loop right there Ain't this thing nice though, guys? Golly. Oh, and something else I really like too. So um, back here in this back door here, you got your, your air hose reel down there, pressure gauges. But the cool thing is the air reel comes out of the, out of the bumper. And what I was gonna show y'all as far as from mounting the, uh, the welder, they have a raised plate right here so that you don't have to uh, drill it actually into the nap hide box you just can drill right into that plate up there so that's where we'll mount our welder but gum, I am just uh, like a like a kid on Christmas morning I know this guy right here for sure is super happy yeah it's got some nice drawers over here on this side all the way up next to the you know, to I the got, cab. I got some pretty nice drawers too. <laughs> Don't nobody want to talk about your drawers. <laughs> yeah, it's like a built in snap on toolbox. All locking. Has a little trigger handle right there. I, like that. I do too. Man, That's what I'm talking about. It's a, it really is nice, man. The cab, I mean, everything. Like a, like a Ferrari. Pretty dang sweet. Yeah. You know the only problem with this? You ain't got one. It makes my truck look bad. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, uh, I got a golf cart. Yeah, that's right. You All got I need you, is a set of wheels. Yeah. Yeah, you, a set of rims. I'm gonna find me some in the landfill. You wait. All right. I, They're not gonna match. I can't afford another truck, but I can get you some <laughs> rims for your golf carts. <laughs> Now this thing's pretty dang sweet, but that crane is gonna really make all the difference in the world. Oh yeah, you got storage all up in there. Put your pry bars or what have you. Yeah. Workbench. Oh, this is awesome right and here. And then I was just showing the guys on the video that they got an extra plate up there so you can put your oh, welder. Yeah. You don't have to drill into the actual. Yeah, we're about to get him a real welder machine now. He's yeah. had that red uh, Lincoln. Lincoln, yeah. yeah. We gotta get a Miller on this. I, right I think so too. One that red ain't gonna match, and it just it looks old. Yeah, so I agree. Does, we'll get yeah. us a nice blue Miller yeah. sitting up there. Hey, maybe maybe Miller might be watching this YouTube video and be like, "Hey, we're gonna give you guys a, a brand new welder." That'd be for awesome. Your I truck. Mean, blue is better now. <laughs> blue Come is better. Now. Blue is better. <laughs> you know, he said that damn remote is twenty thousand dollars. The remote. The remote. Ain't no damn way. That's what he said. 
whether he was just trying to scare us to keep us from losing it or not, I don't know, but. Well, it goes, it's got a dock in the cab, don't it? It does. Pictures I saw yeah, and, and it's got an alarm too, so if you drive off with the remote on the outside, right, and you leave it, it'll let you know. That's pretty cool. We broke it. Better not have. <laughs> the, uh, it won't extend and it won't go back down. Is it maybe because of the, is it off level maybe? Well, no, there's, the winch ain't going up either. He had it doing it over there. Yeah. But it, uh, but it says this anti two clock system warning. I'm not sure what that means. I can call him real quick. Will it boom down? Nope. Yeah, you give me a Oh. Hey, John, Ryan Williams here. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. What's going on? Hey, I, we was playing around with this um, uh, crane a little bit. We're get, getting a code that says anti two block system warning, we, and we can't get it to cable back in. Is that probably something simple we're not doing? But does that make any sense to you with that that warning? Oh hell, the the, the destruction's done come out. Anti two the screen block. is relaying a warning associated with the limit switch on the end of the crane. This is a roll of sand block being winch. That's what I was thinking that was. So that plate at the end is a safety sensor. Somebody's got to come up there and play with it. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we as we all laugh, but then I see nobody. No, I'll, I'll go up there. <laughs> what it is? That plate at the end uh -huh. is the stop block. It keeps you from reaching up too tight and, and hitting anything. Somebody's got to come up there and play with the old truck. Already? Put it up. Uh, swing it over the truck. Yeah, swing it out over the truck. See if we can reach it. Put it already? Tore it up. 30, 30 seconds. And I already tore it up. Broke it in my toy. Broke it, did it. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all probably heard, but after I called the guy and then we looked in the book, there's some type of sensor or something up there. Really? We've got to got to finagle a little bit to get her back working. Hey, there's a there's a hoe. <laughs> yes, 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 there is. It's funny how you notice the hose. Yeah. Push it up first. No, 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 no. If you roll this all the way up, but this right here would hit. Get that plate, push it up, let it fall back. Let's see if, see if it moves. The whole, the whole, oh, the whole yellow, right. the whole yellow plate. The outside of it. Yeah. yeah. It probably would need to pull down towards you, wouldn't it? Let it snap down when you do it. Like push it and then get off of it. Or pull it, whatever. Yeah, but that might be enough to do it right there. Wanna we'll try it now and see? You still got the same code? Is the code still on there? Yeah. Yeah, code's still on there. So, yeah, I had a whack on it. <laughs> hey, we, you, you know what? We may want to try turning the truck off and then turning it back on. That may reset it. I, I did. You tried it? Uh, what about the whole entire truck, though? Might, it might reset it. There's some kind of little sensor up there that's got the got it confused. All right, we got a reset now. I think we're back back in business. Oh yeah, I see the sensor right there. Right now, you got to take your finger and make so we it. Need to, we need to move it out so it's bend it, bend it some yeah. kind of way. Put something in between that. No, we just need to adjust it. See that the slides on the back of your sensor, everything's adjustable. You got a half inch of play right there. There's two Allen screws, yeah. Yeah. Move it forward. Yeah, hold this camera, I might have it right here on my, my handy dandy tool tool belt. If not, I bet Rolando's got it on his secondary handy dandy tool belt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, probably, he probably got a few more tools than what I got. 
got it. What, what, what size? Probably, uh, try like a like a four or five millimeter. Yeah. In between those two. In between these two, Rolando. Why'd I hand you the camera? It's in between these two alleys. It's just right here. <laughs> oh, you can tell it. You can tell it's Friday. Metric. Probably metric. Dang, y'all went to the Mexican restaurant. They do that. You don't smell the beer on my breath, do you? No, it's okay. Cool. We didn't drink anything. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Forgot it was Mexican, Dave. <laughs> Oh, you got to take the high tank? Oh, well, that'd be perfect for it then. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see it where it's coming out. Well, good. Now you got you a crane, man. You can snatch that thing right off. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, yeah, we can fix that whenever we get a real weld machine. Yep. Get rid of that red thing over there. <laughs> get, get that Miller up on there. So here, here's our old, our old service truck. So those compartments are gonna come in super handy because this dude has got some stuff on this truck. And there's our old Lincoln we've been using for a while. But yeah, I think we need to throw us a, throw us a nice Miller up there, and then drink us a nice Miller this afternoon. I don't know what the, I don't know what the weight capacity is on it I'm sure it'd be enough for whatever we want to do around here 7500 that's a lot oh yeah do your cable Rolando That's out there pretty daggone good ways, man. Wow. I am happy to have this thing right here. We can do a lot, a lot of cool stuff with this here. It's going to come in really handy. Pretty dang sweet, y'all. I do want to give a shout out to Hendrick down in Charleston. There's not a lot of these trucks available right now we have been looking 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 so Rolando found this one so we went ahead and uh, and picked it up for him I'm glad we did he's very deserving of it and it's going to just help us get a lot more work done a lot more efficiently but appreciate you guys watching this video I got to get down to grassroots now because it's wide open busy I'm gonna go down there and help those guys out uh, hit that like and subscribe for me down there y'all know the routine we're almost to 20,000 subs so Courtney and I are going to do a live giveaway as soon just as soon as we hit 20,000 but thank you guys appreciate you hanging out with me see you on the next video